All right, and we are live. Welcome. The plan today is to chat about rod boxes, and uh, not just rod boxes, but I would say really anything that you could put in the gunnel area of the boat, which generally you know is very shallow. Sure. Um, so you want to kind of kick us off about what we mean by rod boxes, what rod boxes are made out of, and kind of things to think about. Yeah. So some of the uh, the older style mako makos or whalers, um, you know, even some of the newer boats nowadays have these <coughs> ABS style. Uh, vacuum formed rod boxes that you know, you've, you've cut out the top cap of the hole and drop that in um, to use for rod storage. So, you know, some of the issues that we're seeing and a lot of our customers reaching out to us, a lot of posts on the whole truth. Um, you know, this this is a, a good solution. Looks really good when it when it first gets installed. I think we have a picture. If you want to kick over sure. to that real yeah, quick, yeah, absolutely. Let's switch back and look at some pictures of it new here. So it looks really good once it's first installed, but you know, with with this being a vacuum formed ABS, I guess uh, just hear a lot of issues of it not weathering very well. Sure, and you know, you can see that even in this sample, we we got grabbed this over from our engineering department. This is a a part we are working on for a customer uh, to uh, duplicate. Let's actually look at it here full screen, uh, and you can see that we've got some cracking right here. Uh, and, and a lot of times this is where you see the cracking is at the mounting points, you know, where they tighten down on the on the uh, the ABS there. Sure. So, you know, exactly like what you're saying. It's, it, it's good looking, but they don't weather all that well. Yep. So for people who let's set this down for people who um, are looking to replace their uh, rod boxes because it's kind of an eyesore on their you know, pretty boat. What are some of the options? I think the first option is probably to look for a replacement of your existing rod box. Absolutely. You yeah, you know, some of the uh, the issues that, that people have found out there is, you know, this is made off of a mold, right? And there's, you know, five, six handful of different businesses out there that, you know, used to make these that, that aren't doing business anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, could have gone out of business back in 2008. Um, you know, th if that's the case, then really you don't have an option unless you can find something that's comparable. The, the mounting holes might not line up. Um, or the depth. A lot of times in the rod boxes, there's a little bit of a, um, a slope to the back because yep. the draft of the boat, the way it fits in the gunnel, it's so tight right there that you want to maximize your storage space. And exactly what you're saying, if you get lucky and can find, hey, this model is still available, this right. is a one-for-one -one replacement, and that's assuming that you, you like the rod you, uh, storage and you feel like you need the rod storage, yep. then that's probably the, the cheapest option. You know, hey, buy a new one, set it in. Um, we find that more often than not, uh, they're not able to find that though, uh, for whatever reason. Like you say, they're out of business, or, or they're they sick. Threw away the mold. Right? I mean, they've got a boat. This is maybe the second time they replaced it. You know, uh, they're looking for another alternative. A lot of people I've seen on the whole truth as well. Uh, they they complain about the fact that these holes, when you're trying to stick the rod through, you're breaking your rod tips because the holes aren't large enough. So oh, you know, in right? this case, you're looking at probably a two inch diameter pipe that you're sticking that through. You know, depending on how the rod lines up, depending on the size of rod that you've got, or if you have varying different rods, you know, it may not work for your application. You end up breaking a rod that probably costs more than the rod box itself. <clears throat> so let's talk about what the options are for those people, those people who, um, you know, who they, um, you can't find this part and are a little bit out of luck, right? So let's switch back over here and I want to show you that we show recently- Show a couple pictures of like, like a couple areas in the boat as well while sure. we switched over there, um, if you don't mind. Uh, like here's an example of, you know, once somebody's removed that box off of the, the gunnel, you can see the cap of the boat dropped onto the top of the hole where that area is cut out. Uh, another customer that we actually work with, if you go back, um, you can see where he's pulled the box out there. Another customer we work with, this one's actually in the transom, if you go to the far right there. Uh, this is a, a locking rod box in the transom of the boat. So something very similar right there, looking for a solution that obviously this just isn't working or you know doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. So for the person who, um, you know, who gets to this point and, and wants to upgrade it, we have started building King Starboard uh, uh, rod boxes. And again, I'm not trying to sell. We make this, we resell the ABS rod boxes from a variety of uh, manufacturers. Um, and, and I would recommend looking at that first. We're not hard selling Starboard as, as, as better. Uh, the one nice thing about Starboard is we can build it without a mold. So we can custom right. engineer something to size. Here is one that we uh, did for a customer 
that is a popular size that we've put on the website now and, it, and is made available. So you know, if you happen to find that this one fits for your area, then, then that's great. Um, if it doesn't, then we have an, a, a customer service team that can work with you and work on engineering to yep. do custom sizes. And I think I've got some pictures of kind of the engineering drawings. Um, let's see, Rodbox. You know, that you would expect. So this is an example of one we did for a customer that someone could only fit two rods in. Sure. Um, there's another one here that I think, yep, is another one uh, with, with two rods. We've done three rods. I think we've done a four rod. Um, and really all of that depends on the available space and then also on what type of rods you're trying to store. If you're trying yeah. to store spinning rods, you could fit a lot more than if you're trying to store offshore rods. Um, also, if you can uh, change directions where you know, this the first rod is going, you know, with the the reel on one side pointed to the left, and then inverse so that you don't have the uh, uh, your reels sitting on top of each other. Yep. Um, that all is stuff that we work directly with you uh, to try to figure out. Hey, what's the best configuration for your area? How many can you fit? And most times it's a, a one for one, right? People are looking to replace and go back to the rod box. In the cases that they're not, we've done a couple other projects. If you want to click back and show real quick before. We do that though I want to show an install this is a picture from a customer awesome. pretty recently wow. yeah, so this is that let's see is that the same one uh, I'm not sure if that is the same it looks like it might be it's it is a three, a three rod. rod yep yeah so this is some pictures from this customer of a rod box that we built this is King Starboard um, here's the same guy so it looks like he bought a port and starboard version of that as well yep so you, like you were saying we have some other options though if you don't sure. want a rod yeah, box. If you, if, you know, a lot of a lot of customers will say, "Look, I've got plenty of rod storage on the boat on the top of my T-top on the back of my console. I've got rocket launchers. You know, what what else can I do with this open space?" Sure. So, <clears throat> and uh, the picture we have here shows you one example. We're going to go through a variety of options, but in this case, we've put tilt-out boxes. Uh, tilt-out boxes are nice because you're able to get a fair amount of usable space in a very uh, small depth, which is again generally your issue when you're replacing these rod boxes. Right. Um, so you can see this customer, I think I even have, so here's the original, right? So this is what he had before. And this one actually doesn't look that bad. I think this customer just wanted more tackle storage space right. and saw this as an option uh, without having to cut a hole in his boat, right? Yep. He could pull the other one out and put uh, this uh, tilt-out box in. You wanna to talk to him about the, um, the, the, what we had to do here with the frame? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see the frame on the top is oversized. So you can see where the combing bolster runs around. Uh, the edge of the boat there, um, you know, it needed something to where it attached on the higher end that was the fasteners were covered over by the combing bolster. So we oversized the frame there to allow it to be installed and then the combing bolster could go over the top of that frame. So, you know, the big takeaway there is, you know, we've seen, we've seen it all. I shouldn't say we've seen it all. We've seen a lot and we continue to see a lot on sure. a daily basis. And you know, just because you see something like this doesn't mean we can't work with you uh, to, to make it work. Um, so let's look now at some other very similar examples. So this guy, uh, for whatever reason, didn't want a tilt-out box, but just wanted an open storage cubby. So you can see here is the door, um, and then you fold it open to a big open cubby with a shelf that just becomes a catch-all. And this is, this is kind of the big thing on the whole truth is you've gone through a couple different uh, posts. People are looking for something like this, you know, an open area they can throw stuff into um, and looking for a solution, right? That's where we've done this before for a customer. Uh, you mentioned we've seen it all. We've, we've seen quite a bit over the years, right? That's for sure. So then another option, which is a little bit unique, but we've started to get more requests for it, and that is just a trim ring. So, you know, and this maybe isn't the best example of a picture, but let's say that you pulled out your rod box and you had this open area and you were on a, uh, a significant budget, right? You didn't right. have money. Um, to invest in a, in a big storage unit. And, and, and I should mention that you know, a lot of the tilt-out boxes that we've shown, awesome, beautiful, super sweet. Yep. They're not cheap, right? It's not... It's not um, and I think the value of the boat is important, right? I mean, if you're, you're looking at a boat that you got for $500, you're just looking to run on the weekends. Sure. Uh, you don't want to invest a ton of money. The, the rod box that you install is the best part about the boat, right? Yeah, that's like good. Um, you know, you, you, you look for a solution just to get back out on the water. And that's where, for this customer, this is the case, right? So we, you can see where the rod boxes come out. Um, you know, we, we build this inset trim ring 
uh, which basically is cut to size. You can choose, you know, what are what are my my length, my height. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll offset it to where it's a three quarter piece material milled down that you can drop in there. And then, you know, the solution that he came up with. And again, it's not ideal depending on the boat if you if it can drop down underneath the hole or the area. But if you'll show that that uh, next picture there. You know, he's just kind of cleaned so this, out that area, painted yeah, it, it. This is a different, I think this one's a different customer. It looks like a different cutout. Yep. But it's an example for sure of what you're saying, how you could just paint the area, yep. right? He's installed one of our gunnel mount rod holders in there. So he gets kind of the same functionality, um, but again, for, for a little bit more affordable. And what, what you would want to do there, you can see where the fiberglass is trimmed out, but it's not perfect. So, you know, adding that inset trim ring allows you to, you know, have a clean area for the, the pass-through as well as clean up all of the edge around uh, the trim ring itself. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the other ap application for, for this is there are a lot of the, like you're saying, the old Makos and the, the whalers that didn't have the vacuform rod box that just had the... Uh, you know, trimmed out recessed finished fiberglass areas that right. had the teak trim. Correct. So we do a, we do a lot of uh, replacement teak trim. Some of those, unfortunately, are not uh, square. You know, are not perfect rectangles. They've yep. got a little bit of shape to them. At which point, we often um, need the customer to send us the replacement teak parts. You know, but we do that or all a the time. template, right? A template drawn or a template. out that we can digitize. Absolutely. So the the next section here is kind of a combination of all of the above and this is where you know on a, on a on a daily basis we're having conversations with customers that are replacing uh, you know these things and going hey uh, I kind of would be nice if I had a tilt out section here and maybe an open storage there and I still kind of want my rod boxes so let so them be creative be their own engineer right absolutely. so you know we, we kind of take their design their concept what's going to work for uh, best for them while they're out on the water and, and let's click through a couple of these different examples. Sure. So, you know, this example, you still do have uh, two rod holders. It looks like it might have been three. It looks like you, there are three different rod holders here. Now, this only works because this person obviously had open area right here in the yep. boat for the rods to be able to go down in. And that's where, again, it's it's very much so a collaborative, send me some pictures, let's talk through it, what do you, what do you want to store? But then to the right of that, he has this uh, tilt-out box where it looks like he's picked up a couple of uh, 3650 Plano trays. The nice thing to note about the tilt-out, uh, the way that we design them, there's actually a little toggle at the back of it, right? So for somebody that, that wants to gain access, this is really good, that they're still able to have this tilt-out, but because of the toggle that's in the back of the tilt-out unit, they're able to flip that up and fold the whole tilt-out unit completely down once they've removed their gear. So you know, it gains them access if they're rigging the boat. Um, it's actually a, a pretty unique concept. Do you see somewhere on the drawing that displays that? It, it doesn't look like it shows it on this drawing. Let me see if I can find another one that might show it. So here, here it is. And the way I would almost describe it, it's not like this, but it's the same function as like a slide bolt, right? Okay. Think about like a slide bolt, right? That you, when it's in the open position, it hits, and in the 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 doors stop right here so you have perfect access but if you took those planter trays out you could slide this slide bolt again it's not right. a slide bolt but you slide this thing and now the whole thing folds down right because it's not uncommon to have you know battery access or uh, the guy that you saw in the transom right i mean for that to be a tilt sure. down now i've got access to the build you know he still gains the storage gains the usable storage space but you know has something that he can quickly remove to gain access to that area mm -hmm. So looking at this one specifically, this one's pretty cool, where you've got uh, four Plano trays here on this side. It looks like this is just a catch-all area for okay. tossing you know, whatever uh, you know, into here. And then on this right side, they've got a bunch of different tool storage. So he's got knife, pliers, and then two different leader spools to be able to pull his, his leader off of. Awesome. And you can see this one, I can tell just looking at it, that had a very unique frame, right, where the frame is much bigger on the top and bottom than it is on the left and right. And even the frame gap between the doors are, are pretty unique. That's on standard. And, sure. and I know that was because of just the unique space restrictions and trying to you know, cram as much in as you can. Align the mounting holes perhaps, right? Sure. Yeah, totally. Uh, well, it, so sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. Right. right. You align the mounting holes, it's nice because you're not putting new holes in your boat. But you also, depending on just how much um, bite you still get, right. sometimes we encourage people to purposefully offset that. So you're screwing into virgin you know, fiberglass so it right. holds much better. But there's been times that people are passionate about hitting the same holes, right. uh, and we, you know, we can certainly quote that option And with well. the tilt-outs, they're able to through-bolt it, right? So they could still go yeah. back through the same mounting holes, mm -hmm. tilt those tilt-out units 
units out and be able to through bolt it that's, securely that's to the a fiberglass. Good point. Whereas you can't do that with a rod box because you can't get around to the back. Correct. Um, so another option here, <coughs> and this is a little more on the budget side. It's still, you know, can, can be a little bit pricey because it is custom, uh, but there's a lot less material here. And in this case, you can see what the customer has done is elected to just put doors in front of the majority of it. There, yep. there is some tool holders and, and a little bit of catch-all storage in the center section but the left and right doors are just open access to the inside area of that gunnel. That he's now, either built a box in there, or like you're saying, like the older Makos where it's part of the actual yeah. cap of the boat. You know, now he's trimmed it out nicely, had added tilt out storage. And in the case that he wants to store something, right? A lot of, a lot of the complaints about the rod boxes is they're not locking. So if sure. you're storing rods on the boat that sits at a slip, you know, those rods have to come in and out of the boat, where in this case, if you have something that you're, you're locking in there, you know, you're able to, to lock these if you get a locking latch. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like to your point, it, it depends a lot on what's behind it, right? How right. finished is it? How how unattractive is it? Can you make it look okay? And then it, it depends on how much you care, right? right. And to back to your point of uh, how much do you put into a boat into that you boat? bought for $500, yeah. Yeah. right? So these are, let's see, did I go through all of them? It looks like we went through this one pretty quick. This is just a uh, big, uh, looks like one big single tilt out that has four different uh, Plano trays of different sizes and then just open catch-all storage bin for you know, maybe ropes or or whatever else in here. So you know, these are the your types of things we can do. My, yep. my hope is that with this uh, you know you can kind of get your creative juices flowing on, on hey what can I do what are my options you know if going back to, to the beginning you know if the goal is to just find a replacement rod box that's definitely going to be the most cost-effective way and that's definitely an option right Let's see if we have any and that's kind of the goal of these sessions right we want to we want to make sure that we're we're trying to identify and with your help of course target some issues that a lot of people as they're refitting or, or rebuilding their boat that they're running into and that you know we have a solution for so you know really looking at, at this as an issue and seeing that there is a lot of, of, of uh, posts on forums about this um, we feel like it's a good topic for discussion for sure yeah I think it's a problem I yeah. mean I do I, I think that you know, like I said, this isn't bad mouthing the product of, of rod boxes in general, but I do think they age faster than the average thing on a boat. And yep. so oftentimes that is one of the things that needs to be addressed. Um, and unfortunately, because of the way it's manufactured, where it is mold and often model specific, yep. people can get into a, oh crap, I what do I do no here? options. Um, so let's look at some of the comments real quick. Uh, Mark asks, uh, good day, uh, would we ship to the Caribbean? I love your products. Absolutely, we ship uh, all over the world. Uh, so you know, unfortunately, depending on the um, uh, size of what you're ordering, yeah. you might wanna call in and make sure that you get the best uh, pricing. We'll kind of get creative with you on the best way to ship it. We ship a lot to freight forwarders. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people in the Caribbean, they have a freight forwarder already established here in, in Florida. You know, we're right here in Orlando, so we can get it to Miami relatively affordable. Oh, absolutely. And then from there, your partnership that's in place, you guys can ship it to wherever you need to. And then Sarah asked, do you have different sizes and style of rod holders? Which, yes, we do. You know, and one thing we didn't talk about that might make sense because it's uh, at least uh, you know, a tangent to this is looking at the different horizontal rod holders that we sell. You know, so once you, and so here are the two rod boxes that, that we have loaded online that are full replacements. But if you look at all of the different, um, let's close this out. If you look at all the different horizontal rod holders, you know, this is an example of what you could mount you know, into your recessed area sure. once you finish that area out and it looks attractive. So yep. you've got all different options, four rod, three rod, some that... So uh, a very basic lock. way would be, of course, building you know, a, a box with a frame around it, alternatively building a, a door with a frame, and then having something inside like we saw that one customer do. Uh, where he still has rod storage, but you know, just basically is add a finished frame to the fiberglass. Absolutely. Anything else you can think of? Nope. Awesome. Well, let us know what your thoughts are. We'll be monitoring the comments. So if you have any questions, that's a great place to uh, hit us up there. Let us know if there's any other topics that you think are relevant that, that you would like to hear us chat about. Uh, but otherwise, thank you very much.